Good afternoon, Professor Didi here to talk about Chapter 5 of the text related to political socialization and public opinion. Political socialization, the fancy textbook definition, is the process of introduction into political culture. It's the things that help you develop your opinions and views over time. Your values plus your beliefs equal your political socialization. What influences it? Family, type of household you grew up in, schools, where you went to school, types of schools, peer groups, who you hang out with, media, what you watch, government, religion, gender, your ethnic culture, geography, where you live, income and occupation, party identification, all influence how you became the Democrat or Republican or the liberal or conservative that you are. Family factors include events in the home, the types of shows that people watch on TV, conversations, apathy, activities, opinions of parents, school and education factors, as I mentioned, where the school is, the North and the South even make a big difference. Peer groups, who you hang out with influences how you get your political opinions and views. Generational effects, such as the Great Depression, World War II, or even events like 9-11. Hitler's hold on Germany gave him a degree of legitimacy in the 1930s as political socialization was developing there and people just followed along. Public opinion concerns people's immediate reactions to policies and problems. It refers to political and social issues and represents a diverse array of conflicting opinions that can change very quickly. There are Opinions are based on values and knowledge, or opinions can be based on lack of knowledge, what people don't know and they think it is true. Opinions can reflect ignorance because citizen knowledge is often weak. While political culture is concerned with long-term beliefs, public opinion is concerned with people's immediate beliefs. What shapes public opinion? Political socialization, social class, education, religion, age, gender. Difference between elite and mass opinion. Elite opinion usually more educated and have more complex and sophisticated perspectives. Mass public opinion doesn't understand as much about the complexity issues, but people will react if government takes action. In 2008, the bailout of the banks is a good example of the split between elite and mass opinion. Those factors shape the public opinion on any given issues. Public opinion matters to government leaders, and all government officials are subject to the pressures of public opinion, what people are thinking. Public opinion views held by citizens are willing to express openly. Some people have opinions and they don't want to tell anybody. Public opinion is flexible and can change with the times. On most issues, only a small percentage of people are informed enough to give a clear opinion. People liked Obama and Reagan but often didn't like their policies. They liked the men personally. Public opinion surveys are often more expressed in a public's view than in elections. In public opinion, polling and survey research play a major role. When it comes to polling, you can't blindly follow what the polls say. Look at the election with President Trump and what happened in 2016. Polls don't tell you just who's winning and losing. It tells you what's on voters' minds. A poll might show your candidate is losing by 10 points, but in the same poll might show that 80% of the public agrees with your candidate on one central issue. In turn, the, can the campaign will start to make that the central issue in the campaign. When Bill Clinton ran for president in 1992, the issue was the economy, and that's what the Clinton campaign focused on, and he won. Politicians use polls to help make decisions. Polling is done by contacting voters and asking them a series of questions about political issues and themselves. A poll conducted by telephone or a cell phone is usually the most common and is unlikely to produce accurate results because certain groups are at home or will list answer their cell phone in a different way than other people will. The growth of cell phones though has increased polling problems because usually the people who own cell phones are much younger. 
a random sample of people to replicate the views of a larger population and everyone has an equal chance of being selected. Here's the thing about random samples and polling. If you're going to poll in the city of Baltimore what you think of the mayor, you have to make sure you poll accurately. And that means at least two-thirds of African Americans. It means polling at least more than 50% of women. You can't poll a bunch of guys in Fells Point and ask them what they think of the mayor because it's not going to be accurate because you have to poll all of the city. In-person interviews are effective, but they can be costly but very dependable. The accuracy of a poll is measured in terms of sampling error, usually plus or minus 4%. In a poll, a wide sample of people must be done. How the question is asked, or even slanted sometimes, the tone of the voice of the person asking the question, the time of day can matter in polling. As I mentioned, polling is a snapshot of what people think at that moment, and people's minds can change very quickly on issues over time. Even exit polling, when you poll people at the polls and ask them, who did you vote for, can be inaccurate. It is pretty easy to construct a bad poll, one that is unrepresentative, that has a biased sample. Sometimes interest groups will conduct biased polls to get the answers they want. For example, asking a person, do you think people have the right to protect themselves? Most people will say yes. When you ask people, should they have the right to own an AR-15 in their house? A lot of people will say no. When people were asked in 2010 what they thought of Obamacare, most people said they didn't like it. But when they're asked what they thought of individual provisions in the Affordable Care Act, people said that's a great idea. Obamacare and the Affordable Care Act are the same thing. Presidential poll ratings are about presidential support with approval or disapproval of job performance, not about popularity. Presidents typically start with high support and enjoy a honeymoon period with the press and the public in their first year in office. Popularity almost always declines and few presidents leave office as popular as when they enter office. With increased polarization, it's hard for anyone in the near future to get a poll rating above 60%. Major foreign policy events spike presidential poll numbers and Americans will generally rally around the flag. Obama gained 11 points after the death of Osama bin Laden. In most democracies, most of the people cluster in the ideological center. As people get older, they become more conservative. Retired people are economically liberal because they support Social Security and Medicare, but identify as conservative because they have traditional non-economic values. Public opinion in the United States is not particularly good at measuring the liberal or conservative tendencies of the electorate, in part due to the high fragmentation of citizens. Political leaders are apt to pay more attention to a group with more intensely held views. Pro-life, pro-choice people, gun advocates, they get a lot of attention because they yell louder. Polling is not fair because people lie. People didn't want to tell people in 2016 that they really were intent on voting for President Trump. At times, people don't understand the poll question, and they give what they think is the best answer. Then you have the bandwagon effect, giving the answer they think is right. And then you have push polling. Polls do more than monitor public opinion. In many cases, they make public opinion. Poor poll showings in early campaigns can lead to the defeat of a candidate. And contributors will lose interest. If people don't think a candidate will win because of the polls, they won't vote for the candidate, and they also won't give the candidate money. In 1936, Literary Digest did a poll and showed that Franklin Roosevelt would lose in a landslide. He won in a landslide. The poll was faulty because they only polled people who owned cars and telephones. Well, in 1936, a car and a telephone was a luxury, and not many people owned those things. In 1948, the Gallup poll showed that Thomas Dewey would defeat Harry Truman. The poll was wrong. Interest groups, as I mentioned, use bias polls to make their points to their supporters and government officials. Tracking polls is polling done over several days in a row to see how the public reacts to a series of events. 
In 1919, the majority of Americans wanted prohibition. By 1933, the public was adamantly against it. In 1993, the American public supported the Clinton health care program. By 94, they were against it. Events make people change their minds on what issues are important. A poll can influence how citizens feel about an issue. Finally, when you think about polling, think about a few little things. What role does public opinion play in the American political system? At times, it's rather huge. There are some candidates, and Bill Clinton was known for doing this, would poll on things before willing to express a strong opinion. What role should polling play in public opinion and democracy? How does social class affect how people think about politics? How reliable are polls, and how reliable are they done? Should politicians be responsive to public opinion in democracy, or should they lead public opinion? At times, America can be governed by polls, and that can be rather dangerous. Take care, and have a great day.